Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. In this fourth video, which is part two of the timing, we're going to get rid of the final delay. And then we're going to solve that other issue where if we stop the data from coming from the next unit, it puts it in a state where nothing happens. This is exactly where we left off with part three where we eliminated these two delays, but we still need to get rid of this delay right here. And like I said, when you would stop the, um, down here, when we would start and stop it, it would cause it to stop getting data altogether. So we're gonna, we're gonna take care of both those. We're gonna start with the Arduino itself. If you remember, we left it at a state where when we eliminated this delay, we were getting some really crazy data back because it didn't, it was not processing the while serial two was available portion of this. I'm going to upload it and just um, refresh that. This will also display the other problem we're having. If I press start here, nothing happens. I'm going to have to reset the board to get data to start flowing. And now I'll set the auto scroll off. And you can see that the data just isn't correct. The counter should say 8 every time. And it never seems to get, you'd figure randomly it would have to hit it. Oh, here it is right here. We got a couple eights, but for the most part it it doesn't work very well. So we're going to go back into the Arduino and fix some of this. We're going to change this whole section down here. So I'm going to start by commenting it out. So that way it's not in use at all. I'm going to do some cutting and pasting here because we're going to continue to use this portion right here. Once we send the data, it changes the stage to get reply. So if it is in get reply, we still want to collect data. We're just going to do it a little different. We're not going to check and do it while serial is available. We're going to collect the characters one character at a time as long as the stage is still equal to get reply. But since we're doing it one character at a time, we're just going to check if serial two has available data. And if there is data available, we're going to add it to the character, and then we're going to add it to the data from display. And we're still going to increment the counter. But we'll need to declare the character and the data display differently because if if we were to declare it here, since we're only going to get one character, it would override it every time we went through here. And the data for display, the character may work fine because we're only getting one character at a time and adding it to the data from display anyway. But in this case, we're going to move it up to the top. So we're going to put it up here. So we're going to define the character and set it equal to zero, and we're going to define the data from display. And then that way they'll be defined every time we go through here, and we can set it back to zero whenever we need. So now what we're doing is after we send the get request, we set the stage to get reply. As long as it's still set on get reply, every character that's sent back from the action is going to just get added to the data from display. We're not doing anything with that, we're just adding it to it. So at this point, since it never gets set back to get request, we're never going to run this again. So we're going to send the get request and it's just going to fill it with that first reply. And that's really all that's going to happen. So now we have to detect when we've received the complete command from the action. The action command, when it's complete, sends three FFs back. And we can use a new command here that I have never done a video on. I'm considering doing a video dedicated only to this command later, but for right now, if you're following along, it should make sense to you. So we're going to take, we're going to say if the data from display, and the new command is called ends with, E-N-D-S-W-I-T-H, end with. And you can see that it changed to red to let you know that it's an actual command. And for now, we're just going to put a placeholder in here. 3FFs. So we're going to do this 
We're going to do what's in between these two curly braces when the data display ends with three sets of FF. And we'll define this later. For right now, I want to get the logic right. We'll scroll down here. And so what we're going to do now is that means that we've received all the data. So we want to print it out. just like we did below. We want to print out the counter just like we did below because that's counting up and that should still be accurate. We're going to have to reset the counter just like we did before. But here's where it's a little bit different because the data from display at this point, we've done whatever it is we're going to do with it. In this case, we're going to print line, but you could check. You could do anything with that data at this point. We need to reset it set it back to zero. If we don't reset it, it's going to continue to add characters to the end and then you would get a double string and a triple string where it would just keep adding and adding and adding. The interesting part is if we didn't do this, it would run through this again because the first time through it, it would add whatever it is. Like with Bill, it add the B. Well, it would change this. So it would be F, 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 B. So it would continue to add Bill and then the three Fs again and then run this again and you just have a longer string but we'll reset it to zero so that doesn't matter. And then we want to send the get request again. So now we're going to change the stage to get request. I believe it's a lowercase g and a capital R. Let's go up here and look. Yes. But now we have this to contend with right here. And what we want is we want a string that has the Fs in it to compare it to, to know if it ends. But putting FFs, since they're not ASCII characters are not real characters. We have to create it a different way. And we're going to create it up at the top. And we're going to call it end care for the end characters. And we know that it has to be a string. A string can be made up of many characters. And the easiest way to turn a hex value into a string is to call it a character and then define it as that hex value and then we'll cast it as a string. So this will say 0FF, it'll turn it into a character and make it a string, but we need to do it three times. And the way you make a, you add to a string is just with the plus sign. So now we've got this end character string, which is made up of three FFs. We'll copy this, and put it right in here. So now it should work just as before, only there's no delays and we should get good clean data out. I'm going to compile first. And it failed. Oh, I need to add a... Try it again. There we go. Now we're going to upload it. Clear the output. And I've stopped the auto scroll so you can see it, and it's very clean now. We've got rid of that double characters and the P bills and the hole separating it. We'll run the auto scroll again, and yeah, it's all E's or all eights. I mean, that's how you can really tell up here. There you go. Now though, we still have the problem. If I stop this and go back to it, clear the output. You see, there's nothing there. I start it again and nothing comes in until I reset the board. It would be nice if it didn't have to reset the board if, if when I start and stop this it just starts flowing again and we're going to address that next. So what you can do is what we're going to do is we're going to check every second. It takes less than a second for the request, far less than a second for the get request and the get reply to complete that. And so if this get request sends something to here and it doesn't get a reply, what we're going to do is after a second, if it hasn't got a reply, it's going to send it again. And we do that by setting up an asynchronous timer. I have a video on that and I'll put a link to it up here if you want to dig a little deeper into it. But a timing circuit or keeping track of seconds in here uses a long. You can see we use different things, integers, string, characters. A long and contain can hold more data and we're going to call it a watchdog because we're going to we're going to watch out for a, if a second has gone by without anything happening we're just going to reset that um, that stage variable
and we're going to initially set it to zero. But in the setup, when the thing starts, when we start running this, we're going to want to set that watchdog. We're going to set that watchdog value equal to the current millisecond. So that way they're they're equal when we start the loop. And then down here, we're going to put an if loop. So if the current milliseconds, this command right here, all it does is gets how how many milliseconds have happened since we've started running the the code. If it's equal to the watchdog variable plus 1,000, which would be 1,000 seconds since we last set the watchdog variable. or one second later, then we want to do something. So once this is set, it's going to skip this until, the, until a second has gone by. Then it's going to say, oh, we're going to do whatever's in here. And we're going to set, if it, if it does get into here, we're going to set it back to get request, just like it, if it had collected the data. After a second, it's going to set that. If everything is functioning as proper, we don't ever want this to happen. So after in, if we've collected data from the display and we've gotten all our data, we're going to set that watchdog variable equal to the current milliseconds. So in this case, as long as everything's functioning as proper, the watchdog is always going to stay well within a second of whatever the current milliseconds is so this will never execute but if we stop if we stop the next display then this will never execute and this will execute and it will set it equal to get request and it will continue to send get requests even if the com port is off now or even if we have the next display shut off now we're not going to be able to see it though unless we put something in the um, Arduino up here to let it know we sent the request. So we're going to add a serial print line up here. And add this as kind of alert to the serial monitor to let us know that we've sent the data. Let's do a compile. Oh, I put only one equals. And we've got it. So let's upload it. Turn on my auto scroll. Oh, except for we will see one difference because now it's saying send to next. So when we get the data back, we show what we get back, the counter, and the fact that we send. This is actually above these two. But if I were to turn off this, we should still get this, but it shouldn't be as fast. If I turn the auto scroll, as you can see, this is going very quickly. If I hit stop, I'm guessing that you're going to see the send to next every second. It's interesting, you're only seeing it three times. Let's go back to the Arduino and see if we can figure it out. And after searching around a little bit, I forgot to set the watchdog equal to the current milliseconds. When I didn't do that, what was happening is the, the loop is happening very fast and we're flooding the next with requests because it's always true. When we set it equal to the current milliseconds, then we have to wait for one second before we'll reset it back to the get request again. I'm not 100% sure why we only got the three or four lines on the serial monitor. My guess is the Arduino may have froze or something like that. I wish we could go back and reset the Arduino and know for sure, but we should be good now. And now you can see we're getting that every second we're getting the send get to next. And if I turn this on again, it should start collecting data. And it does. And the 
data looks good. I'm going to shrink this down so we can see it live. I'm going to hit stop. You can see it's every second. And let's hit start. And we've got the data flowing again. Which is pretty much exactly what we would expect to see. So in this video, we really didn't do anything to the Nexion itself. What we did, move the character initialization and the data from display to this area up here. We also created an end character string out of the FFs, so we can refer to that. We created a timing variable to watch, and we called it watchdog. And then we initialized the watchdog here. And we added a line here just to give us a something so we could see. We broke this larger um, if statement into two smaller ones. So we were able to delete that um, short delay of 30 milliseconds. And then we set up the first one to just check. If it's in the reply state, we're going to get the characters as they come in. We don't care how fast they come, slow they come in, we're just going to get them one at a time. And then we're going to test down here though and test as we add them it ends with three FFs then we're going to do something with it we're gonna print it we're gonna show the counter and then we're gonna reset it back to nothing and then we're gonna reset the stage back to get requests so that it sends the get request the next time and then we reset the watchdog so that way we know that it happened and it won't execute this statement down here but if something happens here it will execute this every second and set that back to get request. So that way when we start it back up again, it goes back through. Completes the uh, timing on the get request. The next video we're going to do some parsing on the get request. I'm going to pick up right where I left off from this video. Well, that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up. And also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.